Assalamualaikum ji. Welcome back to another episode of Kya Kya Kazi. My guest today was Aisha binte Rashid. Aisha is a journalist. We get to speaking about the paradigms that govern the Me Too movement in Pakistan, about how to interact with conversations about mental health, conversations about sexual harassment, about what it is to live in fear of sexual harassment, of rape, and of how we are often governed by powerful personalities and maybe don't hold them accountable like we should. Enjoy. Three, two, one. Aisha Binti Rashid. How are you doing, Aisha? Why are you smiling? I'm good. Because that was very interesting to see. The yeah, three, it, two, it, one. Yeah, it just... Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how I started that. What? Oh, uh, three, two, the, one. The three, two, one. Huh? But you I just do it, it now. You cut it out, I'm guessing. Huh? You usually cut it out, I'm guessing. No, I never cut it out. Oh, okay. I, 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 in fact, I make it a rule to not cut it out. That's interesting. That's fun. Why do I... Khair, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. 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 Mm. Alhamdulillah. What, so you had gone to. Abi thoye din pehle you were in Lahore. I was in Islamabad. Yeah, you were in Islamabad. Yeah. For, for what? I went to see my best friend. Okay. Uh, her name is Sania. So shout out to Sania. Sania is her best friend. Yeah. Cool. I haven't uh, been out of the city in a really long time, so I just needed a break. So I went to Islamabad. It was uh-huh. a lot of fun. The air was so fresh and like so clean. And the weather was nice and cool, you know. I was wearing a coat and sweaters, which was like a pleasant change from Karachi sure. to Marchi Garmi. Sure, sure, sure. And um, wh- but what do you work? How? Do you, what's your work? So yeah. I am. So right now, I've taken some time off work since December. I've not done much work, but I'm a journalist mm-hmm. uh, by profession. Uh, right out of college, I used to work for Herald Magazine at dawn. Wow. Then I was at Coke Studio for about a year and a half. And then I was at Soch Videos. It's like a digital media organization. Awesome. Uh, Coke, <laughs> ek min, Herald, I know. Coke Studios? Mein... Coke Studio, mein, I used to uh, do their like press releases and things like that. And then while I was there, we started a blog. So I would write, there was a blog post for every story and every artist. Sorry, every song and every artist. Cool. So I would write that. Yeah, that was a great experience. Yeah. I did like hundreds of hours of interviews so my interviewing skills sort of became really polished during that time and I also wrote a lot and yeah. you know just got narratives out of those interviews so that was an amazing experience I think it really taught me a lot have you so your but your journalism has most of it centered around uh, so, music yeah so a lot of my work as a freelance journalist has been centered around culture and music you know things like film reviews uh, covering events uh, musical events and things like that but at Herald and Soch, in these jobs, it was... At Herald, I was mostly a, a desk editor, but okay. the writing I did was, like, social justice uh, geared. Okay. Okay. And at Soch, I was a fact checker for a bit. And then when I started doing videos, that was also social justice geared. Okay. And that is my aim, to full-time for my beat to be social justice, basically. Social justice. Yeah. Uh, define that. So just anything, like the rights of gender minorities, the rights of uh, ethnic and religious minorities, the challenges they face, the... Uh, challenges faced by workers in factories, in shipyards, you know, I, that's one specific story that I did, uh, of domestic workers. So that's social justice. Society ke har tabke ke kya challenges hain aur hume kis tarah usko sahi karna hai, basically yeah. that. Animals also, I'm big on animals, you of know. Of course, no, of course. Um, anyone who's ostracized, anyone who is in need of help, yes, justice basically. of any sort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Um, so, but this this has always been your pursuit, right? Yeah, but journalism? Yeah, oh. no, th- social justice. No, when I was younger and I just started journalism, I had very lofty ideas of being a war correspondent. And then I, yeah, and then I started okay. journalism and I realized being a war correspondent is not as easy as I thought it would be. I mean, why were you thinking it was easy at all? It's yeah, a war yeah, correspondent. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, I never thought it would be easy, but it was in my head, it was a cool thing to do. But then I started going out on the field and, you know, interacting with suffering in the real world. Oh, yeah. And I realized that, you know, the suffering that is probably present in wars is probably 10 times as much. And yeah. it takes a lot of, you know, stamina to be able to cover that. So I decided that that may not be the best thing for me. Sure. And then I was sort of just exploring things, meandering around a bit. But I think for the past two, three years, I've known it's going to be you know, social, social justice. justice. Yeah, I uh, I, there's a 
there's an anecdote it's an anecdote it's an anecdote uh, that uh, a war correspondent shared it, it was in the starting of a book i don't remember the book yeah i don't remember any of it but it was in vietnam yeah and uh, he was uh, the person the, the war correspondent was speaking to uh, he was speaking to victims huh. no not victims per se so survivors of the war no mm-hmm. um and uh, so he asks around he's like at the end of the day you know this is how you break suffering down to statistics and i suppose you have to at some point uh, yeah. what are you going to report right yeah. so he's the, just the coldness of it so he's like anyone here been raped yeah all the hands go yeah, up right yeah. he looks around he's like anyone here who's been raped speak english immediate next question that's just you yeah, know what are you going to do yeah you know and 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 i suppose that's so interesting because yeah. you have to record it yeah. right yeah and you have to you can't talk to them there's no time to learn their language their it's language, just yeah. you know yeah so you have to well, well, it, that's very interesting uh, and super that, heavy also huh? yeah that's super heavy and i i guess that was also that also brings to mind the question of बिकॉज सी हमें तो एज अ बहुत ट्रेडिशनल जो जर्नलिज्म ट्रेनिंग होती है उसमें कहा जाता है दैट यू डोंट बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ द स्टोरी यू कीप योर सेल्फ रिमूव राइट स्पेशली वॉर कॉरस्पॉन्डेंस हैव दिस ट्रेडिशनली इन वॉर कॉरस्पॉन्डेंस देर इज दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ आइडिया दैट इफ यू नो यू जस्ट टेक अ पिक्चर इफ समन इज सफरिंग इफ समन इज बींग शॉर्ट डाउन यू टेक अ पिक्चर एंड यू मूव ऑन यू डोंट ट्राई टू इंटरफेयर इन द स्टोरी इन एनी वे हाउ कुड हाउ मच ऑफ यूर सेल्फ यू किल इन दैक्टली राइट हाउ डू and that mm-hmm. i think that idea has become very outdated now especially with uh, the younger crop of journalists because we realize that our work is political and there's no such thing as our ob- objectivity in our work oh, come the, on you know like but yeah. yeah and we have to if we're doing something if we're talking about something then that talking about something itself is an interference in the scenario right of because course. you're bringing it to light you're of making course. a point about it so that's yeah it's interesting that you would bring that up that's but, very heavy because uh, so uh when i was in in school i studied philosophy right and often this would be something that i would say you know people would be like objective truth kya hota hai uh. i'm like for a person the only kind of objectivity that you can aspire towards is to be cognizant of your subjectivity mm, right yeah. so the only objectivity i can aspire towards is ke i become cognizant of as much biases as i have and phir bhi matlab mushkil hi hai ki completely objective ho but i need to at least be cognizant of you know my biases as a, a man as a, as as a sunni muslim as as a sindhi yeah. uh, you know as someone who's this height who's this built uh, this complexion at least all of those yeah. things right yeah and and you you start to figure out why people respond to uh, things the way they do i i suppose you know and there's also a, a real power in being cognizant of your own subject subjectivity which is that you automatically are aware that you could be wrong because there's no 100%. objective reality that you have access to right of course and that allows you to grow and it i think it generally just makes you a better person because then if someone is saying something to you you don't immediately get defensive you know okay okay yeah maybe i'm wrong so i can listen to you yeah. and i can be open to what you're telling me yeah but pata hai usme masla ye hota hai ki aap to apne par mein chal rahe ho ki yaar main to jo na bahut na main to galat ho sakta hu acha but when you when you float that idea yeah out there ke main galat ho sakta hu most generally and i'm i'm generalizing i have to as opposed to make this statement most people instead of being like yaar hum bhi galat ho sakte hain they go ha aap galat hai na they weakness you uh, you yeah. give them weakness even for a second yeah. they're just like oh no no hum to theek hi hai uh, aap hi galat, galat ho na yeah. it's just very very str- it's a strange landscape pakistan is to exist as far as ideas are concerned na no? yeah and i mean your current situation case in point um you know you you know try to bring something to light and immediately were bombarded with all sorts of irrelevant uh, pressures and, and and information that really shouldn't have anything to do yeah, with yeah, you you know yeah absolutely it's just it's just so so strange and But something I, that uh, sorry i'm going to cut you no, off please, please but do. it was very in- interesting to me what you just said about the other person's reaction <clears throat> because <clears throat> when i did what i did and i started getting a lot of messages about you know how i'm very strong and people were sending me prayers and you know people were thanking me because they felt their experiences were seen 
I felt like I had been put on a pedestal. And I, that really started scaring me because I was like, but no, I don't belong on a pedestal. I'm a very flawed person, you know? There's been situations where I've overstepped other people's boundaries, you know? Sure. And, and so don't put me on a pedestal. Don't think of me as this amazing person. Just recognize that we all have good and bad. And I wanted to make a post about it, like saying that, you know, I have been wrong in certain situations. And so I guess other people can also be wrong sure. in certain situations. But everyone around me told me not to do that because they said that this is, if you show even a little bit of weakness right now, opposing parties are just going to clamp onto it and they're going to use it against you. Yeah, because but w that, that is a problem in our, in our yeah. uh, judicial system no, where defamation is just so much easier to prove than then, harassment yeah. or anything of that yeah. sort. No? So, hi, I suppose for that reason alone, because you can't right now show weakness like that. Yeah. You, yeah. Is it, you don't have the liberty, I'm sorry. It's just not something you, you can, uh, you're allowed to do. But that's such an interesting thing to say. Uh, I think Carl Jung the. Carl Jung ne farmaya tha ke, you know, if you do, if I'm paraphrasing obviously, but if huh. you do not gain cognizance of your great proclivity for evil, huh. काम किया ही नहीं आपने ना आप अगर बैठे हुए थे कि यार मैं तो कभी भी ऐसा नहीं कर सकता प्लीज ऑल ऑफ़ अस कैन वेर वन वो जोकर बोलता है ना आई फॉरगेट विच नॉवेल इट वाज पर इट वाज एन ग्राफिक नॉवेल बैटमैन की इसमें जोकर बोलता है यू आर वन बैड डे अवे फ्रॉम बीइंग मी वन बैड डे इज ऑल इट टेक्स यू नो इस आई नो इट्स अनकंफर्टेबल आई नो वी वुड लाइक टू थिंक दैट वे बेटर देन दैट बट वे नॉट रियली वे नॉट एंड एंड इट्स नॉट जस्ट लाइक आई मीन इस सारी सिचुएशन से आप हट भी जाएं राइट इन योर पर्सनल लाइफ यू यू कान बिगिन टू हील और रीच अ पॉइंट ऑफ होलनेस टिल यू सॉर्ट ऑफ रेकगनाइज द डाइकॉटमीज इन योर सेल्फ यू नो टिल यू रेकगनाइज दैट देर इज अ बैड पार्ट ऑफ मी एंड आई विल होल्ड स्पेस फॉर इट एंड आई विल आस दैट पार्ट ऑफ मी वॉट इट नीड्स इन ऑर्डर फॉर इट टू हील राइट तो आप अपनी ग्रोथ बिल्कुल कट ऑफ कर रहे हैं विदाउट इफ यू डोंट रेकगनाइज एंड इफ यू आर नॉट रेडी टू से ओके आई डिट समथिंग रॉन्ग एंड आई एम सॉरी यू नो यूर यूर जस्ट यूर डूइंग योर सेल्फ एट दिस सर्विस बिकॉज इफ यू डन समथिंग रॉन्ग एंड अदर पीपल कैन सी वट यू डन रॉन्ग यूर नॉट फूलिंग दम बाई सेंग दैट आई डिट डू एनी थिंग रॉन्ग यू कुड यू कुड लाइक यू नो वी शुड वी मस्ट गेट इन टू दिस कि देर आर सर्टन टाइप्स ऑफ पर्सनैलिटीज सर्टन टाइप्स ऑफ एक्लेट्स दैट विल इनेबल यू टू साइलेंस पीपल राइट प्रेशर दैम इन टू बींग क्वाइट बट अगेन या इवेंचुअली द ट्रूथ विल कम आउट And even if it doesn't, yeah, maybe about Sonona. You know, do you believe in no afterlife? Do you believe mm -hmm. in no karma? Any, all of those concepts, essentially hold that what you did will come back yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, in some way or the other. Yeah. It, it, if if nothing else, then you're it's going to keep you up at night. You sure. know, even if you're totally successful and nothing bad happens to you, there's going to be a part of yourself that hates the part of you that's not good. You know, because you've not. Uh, worked on like put bringing them together. Yeah. So if nothing else, it's going to keep you up at night. It, if nothing else, it's going to manifest in some sort of so self loathing. Sure. sure. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, someone actually said to me in my the year and by, by mind you, this person is a PhD, right? Yeah. So he's no like he's a proper very very intelligent person, and he's like, you should not uh, harbor bitterness. Huh. I'm like, yeah, ये कौन बुढ़ा आदमी मुझे बता रहा है. I'm so angry. I was very angsty. Yeah. I was. I must have been 20. Yeah. 19, 20. Oh, just, just angry all the time. Just मुझे आप मुझे कैसे बता सकते हो? Rage against the machine. <laughs> He's like, you should let go of bitterness. And I'm like, okay. You know, and then I expected a reason. Why should I let go of bitterness? He's like, because bitterness will turn into cancer. Mm. I'm like, one minute, boss. <laughs> bitterness is a feeling. How can it turn into something physical? He's like, that's how it happens, man. Yeah. A I, and that's just. There's no scientific way of proving it. Yeah, no, but right. I can believe that, you know, because I was telling you about this. Uh, the uh, the the reason that again yeah. I did what I did was because it was turning into poison inside me, and it was beginning to manifest physically. My health was deteriorating. Uh, I was uh, uh, my ability to just even get out of bed and and do the simplest task like working. You know, I didn't have I didn't have the physical energy for it. Because there was all of this stuff that was building up inside me, and it was all negative. It was anger. It was resentment. You know, it it, it wasn't physical cancer yet, but it was definitely yeah. But it was yeah. definitely turning into like a cancer of the soul. So, anger at who? Anger, well, at the person. Okay. You so know, uh, but that's that's normal. Yeah. Yeah, anger at people around me who 
kept telling me to let it go, like it was no big deal, and who kept telling me to just give this person another chance. Um, give him another chance to do what? Uh, just, you know, like have a conversation, let them like forgive them, you know, l- let them prove that there's a good in them as well, you know, things like that. And then uh, like, I, I spoke about this on my social media as well. Then, like, anger at the people who I would, I told ab- about this, and they continued to interact with this person like like nothing had happened. You know, so there was all sorts of, and then also anger at myself, honestly, for making myself vulnerable and putting myself in that position, you know? So there was all sorts of bitterness and anger building up. But like, I think, I think, Making yourself vulnerable is not a bad thing. I absolutely you know? don't think that. It, yeah. My my whole like brand is vulnerability because for a re- very long time I had a lot of walls up, right? And I wouldn't let the people around me in. And then I realized that I just it it makes me suffer. And then I flipped, and now I make myself like me me mupe jo hoon woi hoon, right? I make myself extremely vulnerable. If the first time I meet you, I will tell you about all my problems, and you know just. Be myself, and and I realize that vulnerability is a means of connection. Because unless you're making self vul- yourself vulnerable, you can't connect truly as you are with the other person, and sure. the other person does can't know you enough to connect with you, right? Sure. So yeah, vul- but but I didn't wasn't angry at myself in making myself vulnerable in that way. Okay. I just like putting making myself vulnerable by putting myself in that situation. Uh, how could you have known? I couldn't have known. In retrospect, right. I couldn't have known. But, but there's something to be said, I think, about uh, the way we become beholden, at least in this Moasha, generally we hota hoga, mujhe nahi pata, I can only speak to this Moasha. In this Moasha, the way we become beholden to a certain kind of personality, right? A certain kind of success, a certain kind of story, a certain kind of, I don't know, visage, you know, maybe they look a certain, I don't, I don't know what it is, right? But it's something where... Rules don't apply to these people the same way yeah. they do to the yeah. rest of us, no? Yeah. There's some of that. If, if I'm being very honest, if uh, even before anything that happened happened, if I had interacted with this person um, and they weren't who they were uh, and, and they had acted in front of me and presented themselves as this person presents themselves, I would not give this person a second, second chance. I would not let them into my life at all. Yeah. Because they're just like, uh, kind of, you know, like they're not a pleasant presence to have in one's life. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose the reason that I also did it was because I was like, you know, th- this is this person and yeah. I've been seeing this person for such a long time and they, you know, they got me through my teenage years with their art, right? So I, gu- I guess I also understand why leeway is made because I myself made that leeway a little bit. Sure, okay. But at the same time, there's a line, right? There's only so much you should be able to excuse. When other people start getting hurt, because of this person, then you kind of need to start holding them accountable, no matter who they are. Do we begin to detach the art from the artist? Oh, very interesting question. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about this. Sure. And uh, the reason for that is that this person's art is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, it, it uh, you know, formed the landscape of my teenage years. And then even their later, some, some of their later stuff was, I love it. And so recently what I've been doing is, interestingly, I've been making myself, you know, interact with that art. Like, okay. and it, it brings up a lot of feelings and it's very triggering, but I'm tr- trying to start my, tr- trying to train my mind to rem- remove the artist from that art. Because it's, it's beautiful art. Sure. Like you can't deny that it's beautiful art, I never art, got right? into it. But, but it, 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 yeah, it's good yeah, art, you yeah. know, to, to a certain, till a certain time period, it, it was really good. People swear by it, man. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's so this, I don't have an answer to this, but I, I do think that when you create something, myself as a writer, when I create something and I put it out there in the world, then it's no longer a part of me. No. Then it's a part, then whoever interacts with it, it becomes a part of them in their own way, right? So I have I have very little to do with with how they interact with it, you know. Sure. So yeah, I do think you should you should society needs to have conversations around. Okay, how do we you know make a distinction between yeah. the art and the artist? Because so so one of the other things that uh, informed your decision, you said, was how strong Misha had been. 
yeah, you know, in in yeah. in coming out, in yeah. coming out, and 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 you know, d- doing what she did. But <clears throat> as a consequence of that, lots of people have, uh, <coughs> lots of people have boycotted Aliza for his music, yeah. right? But his music was objectively good. Yeah. You know, to a lot of people, yeah, it was just a lot great. of people. Yeah. yeah. And, and and so now people are conflicted. They're like, you know, but he's this, but the. The art stands, yeah, yeah. you know, in that epoch of time. Uh, that's the other thing. T- t- the temporal value of it uh, must e- cannot be, you know, yeah. downplayed. Like, and th- in that epoch of time, Channo, yeah, when he came yeah. out, was ridiculous. Yeah. This guy had shifted the paradigm, yeah. right? Usse pehle, there was uh, Junoon. Y- yeah, you know? and this was like a poppy fun yeah. thing. It was like a big deal back then. It was a big deal, you know. And so, like, do we now s- take that away from him retroactively because he did this thing? Yeah. Or but allegedly did this thing or whatever. Also, yeah. it wasn't just him who made that art, right? Even if it's a solo artist like Ali Zafar, uh, there's a lot of other people's work that goes into creating a piece of artwork, sure, right? Sure. So, uh, I mean, what have they done to deserve that what they have worked on be boycotted, right? Yeah. We also have to take that into consideration. Yeah, because I think generally, you know, we are incapable of having a nuanced conversation. Mm. Like, even about... It's very uh, black and white all yeah, the time. Or yeah. It has to be, needs yeah. to be, because we want to be angry at something. Thing. Yeah, but anger uh, necessitates black and white. Yeah. You can't be angry at. You can be confused yeah. about because you know uh, there's this other thing that I heard. That because of you know this whole case, Daniel Zafar, who's Ali Zafar's brother, he was not getting gigs. Yeah, uh, he has nothing. The younger to do. brother. Well, yeah, he has nothing. He, to do. Yeah, yeah. What, what the hell? Yeah, you know? yeah. <coughs> Controversy. Yeah. Uh, th- uh, this also reminds me of something actually really interesting because I had a lot of people in my inbox again, uh, telling me that they were really like heartbroken because they had looked up to this person and they really enjoyed their art and now all of that had been ruined for them. And then I thought of this a few, like this came to me like last week because I was going through this old scrapbook that I had made when I was 13 and I flipped a page and there was a news clipping of this person and their band and there was a little like note that I'd written about how much I loved them and how much I loved their, you know, ensemble yeah. and stuff like that. And it really hit me that uh, the, the pain and hurt that other people are feeling at losing this idol, that really hit me as well. I realized that this was, you know, I mean, the pers- removing the person, but the ideal that I had made up in my head had been important to me. Sure. And I had lost that. And that was actually, you know, so my, what I'm trying to say is through, through the people listening that I get it. Yeah. I get that, that, you know, you're hurting and that there's a certain amount of pain in, in a situation like this. But that's why we need to learn to then start to separate the art from the artist. Sure. So that we can enjoy the art and what it does for us without having to worry about what kind of person the artist is, right? Well, that, and also, you said holding space. I think as a concept, that is priceless. Yeah. Holding space, I think, because so much of that, na, so much of, again, our discourse revolves around black and white. Yeah, ye ho sakta, ye ho sakta. You, don't, you, you need to understand, everything can happen. You know, like, for instance, one of the things that happens with the Me Too movement in particular or, or uh, harassment generally is then there's categories that are established by people who have never gone through it, but they establish it for the people who have gone through it, right? Okay, so w- w- what was the uh, grade of harassment, right? What tier? Uh, what yeah, tier, yeah. right? Allah rahim kare. Was it full-blown, uh, was it full-blown rape or was it just harass? The thing is, why are you asking that? It shouldn't right? matter. It, it shouldn't yeah, matter, yeah. right? But, but really, why are you asking that? Do you not have space for both? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, you know, how you, much you know, space would it take? Excuse one and, you know, yeah. be okay with another. Uh-huh. I mean, look, if, you, if you're a judge, that's different, right? Hit up, pucho. But you're not a judge. Yeah. yeah. Aap, aap, you are fucking Mubashir from, uh, uh, you know, Sargoda uh, <laughs> with an internet connection asking me about, you know. So, so then why are you asking that? Yeah. It makes no sense, yeah. no? Yeah. Yeah, you go through all that education and become a judge. Yeah. And then a judge asks because the judge needs to hand out punishment uh, accordingly, uh, uh. right? So, yeah. It's not the same thing. Uh, so then why are you asking well, what was the level? I, th- I think we just take entirely too much liberty with people and their pain. No? And, and the, minute, the minute someone's vulnerable, instead of being like, shit, they're vulnerable, at the very least, let's leave them alone. 
right let's yeah. just let them be yeah um we on the contrary go ha huh, to you know we start trying to make sense aisa yeah. karoge to aisa yoga why were you there you know yeah. like yeah. khuda na khasta still people are like ke noor why was she what the yeah. fuck man yeah. that's you know? insane to me why was she in the house with him like the the girl has has, has been killed you know in the most like how can you be asking these questions at least have some respect for the pain of the dead yeah you know yeah. and and i got a lot of these questions like what happened okay but what happened okay but what did he do you know from strangers who i'd never met or talked to and my question was that why does it matter if you believe me then believe me and make a judgment call on that if you don't believe me then don't believe me but then the, go on you're living your life yeah, then don't interact stop, with yeah, me yeah stop trying to prove to me that i'm wrong you know just just do what you were doing before because yeah. then it just doesn't change your life in any way yeah so yeah i do think that there needs to be a lot of yeah respect for the privacy of victims and just understanding that if a person is has felt abused or has felt harassed that's good enough the, you know the, then the, it's it, it, it then the other person did do something the, 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 even if the other person didn't do anything right and you believe that that doesn't mean you start ostracizing the person who feels attacked mm-hmm. na no? because okay so there are case, and we you know defamation all those things we spoke about there are instances of a person trying to get away with actually defaming someone right wo bhi kahan pe decide hoga court mein na yeah that's aapka aapke karne bolne se ya na bolne se kya ho jayega oh you're a gold digger cool ab kya kare sahi baat hai ab kya kare that did nothing na so then why again are you adding to someone suffering because there is a possibility that you're doing that that yeah. this person actually has yeah. suffered yeah. and that they're not a gold digger they actually have suffered and you've not just added to it yeah how are you okay with that and and it's very interesting because our mind immediately goes to ke bhai you know okay so this person has harassed you or they you know been sexually abusive um but like this hasn't been proved in a court of law you know uh-huh. ye argument itni istemal hoti hai ki court of law mein jab tak nahi prove hua jab tak case court tak nahi gaya to hum kaun hote hain but the, they don't apply the flip to ke agar court of law mein defamation nahi prove hui तो हम कैसे ऑटोमेटिकली कह सकते हैं कि तुमने डिफेम डिफेम किया यू नो ये क्यों ये लॉजिक क्यों नहीं अप्लाई हो रही एंड इट एंड एंड व्हाट इज मोर लाइकली टू हैपन इज दैट सर्वाइवर ऑफ सेक्सुअल हरासमेंट और अब्यूज इज मोर लाइकली टू गो इन कोर्ट फॉर डेफेमेशन देन दे आर टू गो यू नो टू फाइल अ पिटिशन ऑफ हरासमेंट अगेंस्ट देयर यू नो हरासर दैट बट वी डोंट रियलाइज दैट एंड वी डोंट you know take that into consideration when we are making our judgment calls what well, ekpin why do like i don't know how much you've read about this i've read nothing yeah. allah rahm kare i'll say that out at the onset but i still know it's easier to prove defamation than it is to prove harassment why that's an interesting question i guess one thing is you know the lack of witnesses like a uh, your no one is going to harass out in the open right and if they are then they're in it it like they're stupid Just like harassers are smart enough to not do it uh, uh, out in the open so it's it's very i think it's easier to prove ki ye to hua hai nahi because there's no witnesses and there's uh-huh. no evidence than to prove ki ye hua hai yeah. because you know again there's no and and also the reason that defamation becomes up more is because women are scared to go to court because they are going to be subjected to all kinds of questioning all kinds of character assassination if they go to court yeah. so they hold back in going to court but the harasser is like okay you know because the harasser is usually you know a cis male yeah. so they're like chalo let's cis do it what is, do we have to lose cis male is is a binary you know male like someone who, who was assigned male at birth and they're identify as male okay basically. they identify as male yeah. just so everyone is <laughs> yeah, on the same yeah. page because uh cis male i know what it is i think i'm a cis male yeah. uh, so i know uh, but uh, lots of people don't understand that uh, that branding yet. yeah yeah or that that, that categorization yet. yeah theek hai um usually it's going to be that yes usually they're also going to be quite comfortable in the kind of environment that a court is a court is not a it's a very patch sorry patriarchal environment yeah. you know yeah. and it can it it also borders on being a misogynist environment 100% right? what do you mean borders it is yeah, yeah exactly yeah. you know aap dekho even in our own families like it's always said ki yaar aap jo hai apni khala ko ya apni uh, biwi ko 
कोर्ट में नहीं घसीट के आना कोर्ट में घसीटना क्यों होता है ब्रो यू कैन जस्ट वॉक इनटू इट बट दैट्स जस्ट द काइंड ऑफ प्लेस इट्स अंडरस्टूड टू बी बी फॉर वुमेन या यू नो आई मीन आई मीन लुक एट लाइक देयर वर वीडियोस ऑफ मीशा वॉकिंग थ्रू द कोर्ट्स एंड इफ आई वाज मीशा आई मीन शी हैज लाइक अ लॉट ऑफ गट्स आई वुडंट फील सेफ विद ऑल ऑफ दोस मेन थ्रोंगिंग मी एंड you know making comments about me and asking me questions like that experience in itself would be very traumatizing sure, you know and sure. then and and you're going into the court to recount something that is even more traumatizing you know so just courts are very misogynist places like it it really you know scares me that the idea of maybe having to go to court alright i'm correct how do you how do you sort that kind of thing out though do you do you encourage more women to become lawyers i do think that definitely more female judges and more female uh lawyers because again they are better equipped uh to hold space for you know other women. cis women yeah. and gender minorities etc right um it, and so they can practice empathy within the courtrooms uh, but but like again cis men who are born into the system and who are taught that this is a system that privileges you then they practice according to that system right because they don't have no reason they're not invested in breaking away from it sure um but do you think all cis men are conscious of their privilege no the, and the reason that i say this is because i have so many friends close friends close family members jin ko agar galti se bhi bol do na ki yes all men they will go off on how can you say that about me and and you know like are, are you saying that i'm a harasser i i are you saying that I, but when we say yes all men we what we are basically meaning is that all men are privileging from patriarchy right in some way or the other and they may not be aware of it but they're still using that privilege to their advantage but you, advantage. See, you you see how they might feel unfairly branded or grouped right you see it that's a, a good question i see it right but i think that if you are faced with a statement like that and it makes you uncomfortable then the response is not to get defensive the response is to sit with that and figure out what the truth in it is that is applying to your life sure right sure yeah and then work with that sure because yeah i mean it, the onus should not fall on women to educate and to change you know all the time right men need to do some work no 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 of course men need to do some work um but i do feel yaar yeah, i do feel sometimes ki if you take that position writ large na ki yaar yeah, it's not on me to educate how you how, on how you were wrong then like no one's going to take responsibility obviously mai to mai mai to i'm if i'm privileged and i'm benefiting from this society mai to ja raha hu theek hai nahi nahi batao mujhe mai to chalta jaunga it's just one interaction no? unless obviously you're talking mm. to your sister your mother your wife or your daughter someone of that sort uh, or any any friend who's a minority or any of those things um but then to i do feel and i know it gets exhausting yeah, right yeah. I, i must how could it not yeah. right having these conversations but i feel like just to to say that off the bat na ke yaar dekho if you don't understand it that's your problem i feel like it's our problem and it needs to be spoken about like that you no, know no no i totally agree with that yeah well when i say that it's not the onus of you know someone yeah. to educate another person i mean that if in a particular moment someone is saying that i don't have the energy for this conversation or the energy to teach you yeah then it, it that's perfectly okay for them to say of course and and you should respect that you yeah. should say okay you know i understand that you don't have a responsibility to teach me and then you should go out and learn yourself you should maybe talk to other people who at that point have the space to be able to sure. teach you sure. you can go read books you can go on google youtube you know there's so many resources other than that one person who at that point in time doesn't in that, the, in the, at that right? point yeah yeah i think jab all men hua tha na my take on it is a very philosophical one yeah uh so epistemology is the philosophy of knowledge yeah. right all men as a statement literally just means women are so at risk so threatened that unless a man proves otherwise they don't know all men are a threat yeah yeah that's it, it uh, you know do i take it personally i th- i feel like i should yeah. because i am a threat until i prove otherwise just just physiologically speaking uh cis men could that that's again a, a a philosophical and a psychological and a political thing but just physiologically speaking men on average are physically stronger than women hmm. 
Yeah. It's just like that in and of itself. And then, then you factor into that the instances of violence, the instances of, uh, you know, sexual harassment, rape, the instances of, um, you know, abuse in, in all sorts of situations, domestic, otherwise. Um, yeah, man, all men. Yeah, you know, yeah. Until because, proven otherwise. Because when I, uh, I have stopped walking my dog because uh, especially okay. after the Noor thing happened, I was just so like stressed walking down the street because the pu- the public space the roads are filled with men right and there's like f- a few women here and there and I would walk down the street and I would constantly feel like okay looking at me do I need to figure out how to react in this situation because you're constantly in high alert and that that stuff is actually really bad for your nervous system 100%, to be in like dude. constant fight and flight but as a woman when I'm in a public space and especially when I'm alone I'm in constant fight or flight mode of course because well, I'm yeah. Constantly, like, alert and trying to judge if I'm safe or not, right? So, so obvi- without a doubt, yeah. uh, the thing with Noor was a tragedy, right? Yeah. With, 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 without the shadow of a doubt, yeah. it was, right? But I could not, for the life of me, understand, and I tried to, huh. right? I couldn't understand, I couldn't make sense of the visceral reactions that some of the, the f- women in my life uh, had to it. Like, I had a friend literally shut down. She couldn't talk to me, right? Yeah. And this is a person who I talk to all the time and we have great banter about all sorts of things, right? Yeah. All sorts of jokes, yeah. you know, about misogyny, capitalism, all those things. Like, you know, and, and, you know, there's something to be said about comedy being an apparatus for understanding pain and all those things. Say fair, right? Mm. She just couldn't talk to me, right? And as a man, I think irrespective of how tragic it's been and how much I understand tragedy and pain and all those things, I think I just cannot empathize with how on edge women are anyways. And I suppose what happened was just a realization of all the fears or or a lot of the fears that women hold anyways. It it, it drove it home. I mean, I was like... uh, uh, because I didn't immediately stop going out for my walks with my dog. Uh, I had, like, in the two, three days afterwards, I had two fights with separate men because they were looking at me or uh, and they were being weird. And I was so angry because I was like, when is it going to end, right? Like, women are literally being beheaded in such a... Like, wh- what is the change? When will it end? I don't see it ending, right? So I was, I was just so frustrated and yeah. so angry because, listen, no, uh, like, section of society deserves to live that way. Absolutely Like, not. we don't deserve to live in constant fear. Nope. And we don't every time, like, you go... Every day, every other day, we are reminded of how us and other gender minorities are, are at risk, right? Like, like look, at, look at, there's no value of, of a trans life in no. this, in this no. country. Every other day, every day, today, a trans woman is getting murdered, right? I um, can't, like... Yeah, Mohamed Muiz uh, shared uh, statistics on this. I, I can't rem- quite remember what it was, but it was, I think, uh, they said that it was 10 times higher the... the, the, the uh, percentage of trans women being murdered was 10 times 10x higher than normal murder, normal like, murder yeah, rates yeah, and, and normal yeah. murder rates as it is is not yeah, something yeah. To, be sco- to scoff at um, it's just but again you know as someone who's always hoped that conversation will in the end uh, be a way forward I just don't know how to talk to these people who would do such a thing you know like how do you where do I begin yeah like with that conversation like what do you would you say because once you've killed or, someone then you've crossed a line but even then, even if you haven't killed someone right if you sit here and tell me Usne to kuch kiya hoga, how do I have a conversation with you then what did she do that was worth worth this and immediately they'll backtrack and be like oh no 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 I'm not saying that that, that she did anything to deserve this well, well then what are you saying why are you wasting this space? Why are you vocalizing when you have nothing to say? Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, what do you say to a person like that? Because it's, yeah, I, I have no answer for that, actually. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, 
I mean, we're talking about the Noor case, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like she, like she was killed, and you were still talking about kid. Why was she there, and what was this, and what I was mean, that? She, she could be in any place. Yeah, still and, 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 and it could happen to her. She could be walking down the street, and a man could kill her, and that happens, right? She yeah. could have been in her if she was like, uh, she could have been a little girl in her own home, and her own father could have killed her. You know, so what what do the little girls in their own homes, whose fathers are killing them and raping them, what are what did did they do? I th- and I think the conversation needs to backtrack much, much, much more and be stripped down to what we were saying earlier about subjectivity. Whereas to be able to have these conversations, all parties that are engaging in these conversations need to realize that they can be wrong. Right? Oh, dude, yeah, at the very least. Like, instead of being so like, Kuch to usne kiya hoga. you know, challenge that thought. Like, if you're thinking that challenge ki kya kiya hoga khud khud apne dimag mein socho kya kiya hoga is anything that she must have done justifiable for what happened to her right so yeah that's i don't know what the solution is to be honest and it really scares me yeah because hamara scene kya hai ki hum ek na echo chamber mein rehte hain 100% that is slowly awakening to uh, these conversations and is slowly more open to these conversations but society at large is nowhere near being ready for these conversations well with that right that but also then the problem is it's a problem of dichotomies and extremes na so yeah. ek taraf wo extreme hai jo bolte hain nahi ye baat hi na karo just you know fuck it yeah. don't ignore it or kill it or yeah. whatever right yeah. but dusri taraf jo uh, ultra liberal left hai ha huh. wahan pe bhi ek problem hai because they'll cancel literally everything uh, right yeah. they'll cancel everything everything is triggering you know what ha- ends up happening is then you trivialize those words triggers till about a year two years ago was a very context heavy mm. psychological term yeah. right yeah. it wasn't meant to be used for my pink socks triggering yeah. you know it wasn't yeah. meant to be used like yeah. that yeah yeah and, and so we do end up <clears throat> we do end up trivializing words and you you can't understand that to be devoid of consequence that will have consequences yeah no i absolutely agree with that i do think that there needs to be a a balance and i do think that uh the very the new liberal uh you know side uh, uh, you know camp ju- does te- tend to take it to the extreme and again you have to allow leeway for the fact that there could be you know that that there is subjectivity right that's what it comes down to because then you're just making enemies by being very stuck in what you yeah. think is right yeah. right you're just ostracizing other people what well, ostracize the other i think uh the one thing i've learned if i've learned anything allah rahm kare is ki you have to avoid antagonism mm. and the thing is in a society like this where so much is non verbal so yeah. much is pre verbal so much is gestures and yeah. looks and feints and you know gestures and you know you smacking your lips and winking at people so much is pre verbal yeah you have to avoid antagonism and it's so difficult sometimes jaise aap bol rahe ho aapke leading up to you not going out uh, to walk your dog uh, two fights i think those fights i can imagine those fights must have been justified because people take immense liberty with women men yeah. men yeah. take immense liberty with women minorities of any sort if feminine men yeah. trans yeah. men trans yeah. women uh children yeah. you know yeah. anyone who is not but like yeah anyone who in in that moment cannot dominate them yeah, actually anyone who's right vulnerable. even other men by the yeah. way other cis yeah. men even yeah. anyone who in that moment cannot yeah. dominate them yeah because i think we are a society ruled governed by fear yeah sorry you know that's no, okay huh. governed by fear and i i think aise mein i suppose weapon a batman ban jao weaponize fear i don't know i don't know what the solution is it, it has to be something crazy like that though i think it, it's as simple as look it's as simple as our institutions it's our families right because because cis men and cis men who do wrong are coming out of families who told them that ye kar lo they have been going to schools where they've been told ki ye kar lo right o- often not by other cis men though you understand yeah, no, like it's, it's, yeah but generally by the way that society is structured so so that's what i'm trying to say there is a complete overhaul required but how do we do that overhaul till everybody is on board right 
मतलब यार आई टेल यू हाउ इट्स वेरी वेरी सिंपल यू पे इफ यू इंड्यूस द फियर ऑफ गॉड इनटू दिस पीपल सही नहीं इट दैट नीड्स टू बी एब्सोल्यूट कॉन्सिक्वेंस देन इसमें तो कोई मसला ही नहीं है कि लाइक यू नो सो आई हैड अ आई हैड अ पर्सन ऑन प्रे मेमन आई हैड ऑन द पॉडकास्ट एंड शी एक्चुअली स्पोक अबाउट व्हाट डिटर्स रेप सेक्सुअल हरासमेंट एंड रेप मोर देन एनीथिंग एल्स सो शी इज लाइक एंड शी कोटेड सम स्टैटिस्टिक्स दैट माय यू नो आई ऑब्वियसली डोंट नॉट रिमेंबर बट शी वाज लाइक के more than even the the severity of the punishment is the fear of going or fear of going is 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 the is the uh percentage of incrimination like are they likely to get caught uh. right because if if i have a 95% chance of getting caught and put to whatever punishment yeah then i won't do it versus if chalo uh, the 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 punishment is chemical castration. The punishment is public hanging. Yeah. But I have like a five percent chance of that happening to me. Dude, I'll take those yeah. odds. You know, yeah. like whatever. Well, yeah. what's going to happen? You know. Yeah. That's why we keep running red lights because it might be that a police wala will stop us. There's so many variables. Might be that a police wala will stop us. There might be that he'll actually charge us, and might be we'll be ticketed and we might have to pay. Yeah. Do you see? Chances of that are very low. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I think in the in the context of. like harassment and violence against gender minorities uh including women is that there needs to be but ye to ye to actually this is even doable ke aap judiciary ko reform kare aap jo hamare jo law enforcement agencies hain unko reform kare and kya kehte hain you know um gear them towards taking action against sexual violence or gender based violence and or, or harassment and uh, punish them you know yeah, because the system is in place yeah that system is in place and i you know like f- f- uh, forget schools uh, forget fam- families society at large i think if just the judiciary and the law enforcement agencies get it together then this particular problem of sexual uh, violence sexual harassment you know yeah. gender based violence is going to decrease you know it well, has to decrease well, like, i mean i mean th- the thing is m- make you know, it easier to convict them in the in the, the In, inherent to empowerment of the minorities is to make them feel like they're not all on their own by themselves yeah. you know yeah. because jis tarike se cheez ja rahi hai you know how far away do you think we are from actual vigilantism yeah. you know yeah. because it's getting really really bad yeah. Yeah. you know it's it's getting there man it, it's it's not good we're not we're not headed in the right direction i think yeah i agree with that uh and that is also really pertinent to me because i don't think that i could have like i said done what i did without it, unless misha had done it so that was empowering for me to know that i'm not going to be completely alone that there are people out there who get where i'm coming from and who are going to stand in support of me because i had seen them already do that for her right uh yeah that yeah empowering gender minorities and all sorts of minorities they, a, a very intrinsic part of that is letting them know that they're hurt yeah you know letting them know that society is creating a safe space for them to speak their truth the, basically so, so, uh, creating a safe space so that society is a safe space man like just just writ large period like why should why should we aap wali baat so what happens nervous system uh, का एक मैं अगर थोड़ी सी एनालॉजी दूँ वट एंड अप हैपनिंग इफ यू आर ऑन हाई अलर्ट ऑल द टाइम इज यू गोइंग टू दिस दिस थिंग कॉल्ड अड्रीनल फटीग सो यू अड्रीनल ग्लैंड सिक्रीट एपनेफ्रिन विच इज अड्रनल राइट एंड दे डू इट बिकॉज फाइट ऑफ लाइट और जो भी करना है उस फॉर दैट इट्स लाइक दैट मैजिक मटीरियल वट एवर फॉर दैट मोमेंट बट इफ दे they're not meant to be releasing it 24/7 time, yeah. right so if they do um your body gets fucked up you know you you really always tired no one you always tired because you, you know your your pancre- uh, pancreas bol raha your your ad- adrenal glands are just done man yeah. and that's when you go into adrenal fatigue right yeah, yeah. um no one should no one should have to live like that you know yeah. think about it no one should have to live under that fear of something obscene like that happening no and I mean now that you're saying it I totally get it because that's what happened with me because you know uh this stuff was preceded by a year a year and a half of already very um stressful stuff for me and then uh a couple of months after what happened happened 
I sort of just crashed, like I was telling you. I just did not have the energy to do anything. Like, even my basic survival stuff, I couldn't do. But that makes sense, no? Because I was, like, in this constant state of stress for so long. And all, the pandemic obviously contributed to that, as it did for all of us, right? So, yeah, I mean... Adrenal fatigue. Yeah, adrenal, adrenal fatigue. fatigue. It's yeah, a thing. It's yeah. 100% a thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, here's what's interesting, right? A large portion of our uh, our women population actually fit the f- the physical actually have the physical features that go with adrenal oh, fatigue also no so adrenal fatigue when your body goes into adrenal fatigue it goes into such such a survival state that it's like uh, we don't need musculature in our arms and legs yeah. just protect yeah, the base exactly. organs yeah, yeah, right yeah. So, so notice that there are many women who are in our for whatever reason, if they induce it, if, if adrenal fatigue is something that they suffer from, no muscle in their yeah. legs, bums, everything yeah. gone, right? Yeah. Atrophy in their arms, yeah. right? Even neck, yeah. face. Only thing that's protected, so, so bellies, big yeah. bellies, yeah. right? Yeah, interesting. And, and, and so it's, it's, it's that, man, you know? Yeah. Like, it's not, it's science yeah. <laughs> at this point, you know? And, and adrenal fatigue is a very, very, very scary thing. And because it's like your body uh, turning on itself, you and know? And you asked why so many of us had such a visceral reaction to what happened with Noor. And that is because, for like for me, I think I started producing a little bit more adrenaline because yeah. I got a little bit more scared, you know? And other people just sort of shut down because they just couldn't deal with it. It was too much for their nervous systems, you know? A- and that's why... Because we also saw ourselves in her. That's it, like, no? we could easily have been in her position, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, like I said, like, I could have been born in the wrong household and I wouldn't even have to leave my house for that to happen to me, sure. right? You know, I, I think there is something to be said, though, about how much cognitive dissonance there is. Because I think a large part of the fear also comes from um, lots of women do go over to other people's houses, yeah, you know? Yeah. But we don't ever want to even talk about that or admit that, yeah, look, instead of ostracizing them, that you went there, just develop conventions that they're safe. You cannot judge them for doing what they're doing, man. It's their life, you yeah, know? Yeah, and, and uh, these are, if they're doing something wrong, that morality and those norms are very specific to your so- social and cultural context. Yeah. So allow for... So like if if a girl who lived in a society that was, you know, less conservative than ours and she went over to a guy's house and he did what that monster did, would that be acceptable? Because what the, she's on, only acting according to the norms and morality of her, you know, society and her culture. So, like, where do you draw the line then? Just because we live in this society, we have to subscribe to your morality. And if we don't and something happens to us, then it's our fault. Like, what's yeah, but the, I think a lot of us, we won't speak about this because we somewhere I feel like we also think that we're doing something wrong yeah you know yeah so, so, so yeah. I, sometimes I do feel uh, feel that if there was just a more honest conversation about how people have felt so a, a friend of mine uh, they actually said this they were like yeah look you know I hook up with my partners all the time in uh, just you know random random spaces and and what are you going to do? That's just what it is, man. That's the nature of the game. Like, if you're going to do it, like, I can't... If, if I am any kind of friend to this person, I can't be like, you're doing what you're I need to first be like, if you're fucking all right, then what am I supposed... Yeah. You know, we don't have to ascribe to the same kind of morality. Yeah. Here's the thing, right? Holding space. I can think that you're doing something wrong and still care about you. Yeah. You know? And, like, st- and still have basic humanity towards you and yes. not want you to get hurt yes. and, you know, yes, not yes. want you to suffer. Yeah. And at the same time, absolutely think that you're wrong. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Koi hai isme. yeah. You can absolutely be wrong. But also, I really hope that you're always all right, inshallah, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that if there's anything that you need from me to be all right, like, that's always on the table, yeah. you know? Because th- that's what holding is, essentially. It's not complicated. You don't have to go through a degree in psychology to get it. You, know, what, you what, just what, have to have empathy. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Oh. Yeah. 
Tura, Tura. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, but 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 yeah, I I feel like there's just so much so many taboos around having that conversation of you know oh, in Pakistan me to koi no one has sex in Pakistan uh, before marriage or uh, there's no you know extramarital affairs not in Pakistan like dude there's no drugs in Pakistan like what the fuck man yeah take a breath dude you Come know on. Th- like it 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 happens here yeah and and it's just because it's been outlawed. in the like in the law even by society doesn't mean it's not going to happen yeah. so allow for it to happen uh-huh. and find ways to make it safe like uh-huh. we don't have conversations about consent with our children right no no and and that's it do we have conversations about sex i i don't, don't remember what we don't and the and the problem is that we need to have conversations with our children about uh, consent and sexual consent because the younger they are the more vulnerable they are that's when they need it you know like they don't need to be finding out that you know what consent is when they're in their 30s and then think back on the experiences they had and be like oh that was wrong that was not consensual just to, just give them the tools to protect themselves yeah. it's as simple as that yeah i i don't know how how we go about at least convincing the parents ki yaar dekho pehli baat to अगर ये हलाल है इन सम कॉन्टेक्स हलाल है ना इवन इफ यू टेक अ वेरी रिलीजियस परसपेक्टिव टू इट इफ इन सम कॉन्टेक्स इट्स हलाल देन एटलीस्ट इन दैट कॉन्टेक्स दे शुड नो नॉट टू अंडरस्टैंड इट टू बी समथिंग डर्टी सो आई आई डेंट नो दिस बट यूव एक्चुअली बिन यू नो यू यू स्ट्रगल विद मेंटल हेल्थ एज अ थिंग यू वॉन्ट गेट इन टू दैट या सो my i've uh, sort of always had depression i think ever as a teen as since a teenager the first time that i thought about killing myself Another. was when i was like 12 or 13 right so this has been depression has been a thing throughout my life uh in my 20s it got particularly bad uh because i got into a relationship and i was i realized that oh like relationships are things that you can escape into right and not have to deal with your pain and and then i got into the cycle of like a toxic relationship after another and each time there was a toxic relationship my mental health would get worse, worse and worse so depression tha depression ke sath anxiety bhi aa gayi then there were things like not impulsivity not being able to control if i know that i'm doing something wrong but not being able to control it you know things like that, that. Kare, yeah. and yeah. then i also did drugs on top of it that messed with my chemical imbalance even more yeah so Uh, and like i was telling you i ended up in the psych ward at aga khan three times uh, for various reasons but each time it was like you know now you are an, an active threat to yourself so now you need to go into a place where you can't hurt yourself in in, in any way emotionally or physically so that has been a very integral part of my journey yes. how how have how so now you 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 recovered yes. now alhamdulillah alhamdulillah but this healing is like not a linear process no absolutely not you know there's still days when i'm extremely depressed i'm extremely anxious but my coping mechanisms are not drugs my coping yeah. mechanisms aren't like you know toxic relationships it's i have healthy coping mechanisms yeah. which is what recovery which is which could be anything journaling yeah, all journaling, of those things yeah journaling meditating yoga yeah, talking li- to my friends listening to music dude whatever listening to music my dog she's a major you know what's her name Her name's Fauna. Fauna, so, yeah. Cute. Fauna and Flora. Uh, sure, I get it. <laughs> I, yes, yes, I'm not that old. It's fine. Uh, uh, but how was how was your experience throughout that all? Because again, we've been sp- speaking about societal imperatives and societal discourse. We don't really have a fine-tuned societal discourse around mental health. Mental health, we do not. So, I. actually got really lucky i don't know what would have happened if my family was any different from who they were my parents were like they when i when i used to be in the psych ward 6 baje visiting time allow hota tha every day at 6 o'clock they would be waiting outside they would take me to my therapist appointments you know my dad to the, uh, to this day because i used to be in a lot of medicines but now i'm just on like two medicines my no, dad no. used to like those boxes of medicines jo organizers hote hain har hafte wo mere liye bed ke fill karte the you know so uh, i was uh, very sheltered from the negative because of my friends and family even my friends put up with a lot you know and they loved me wholeheartedly throughout all of it um but there were things like like i remember in my during my second time in the psych ward i was like okay i'm going to have an open conversation about this i'm going to openly talk about this on my social media which is kind of you know my mo 
And I used to do these funny updates from the psych ward on my Facebook, and those were public updates. So I used to get some really mean messages from people saying, you know, like, why do you think that we want to see your psychotic shit on our, you know, uh, news feed? Other people would be like, thank you for doing what you're doing. You're doing, you know, whatever. But there were a lot of people who just didn't want to acknowledge it or see it or interact with hai. it. Yeah, ki ye hota hai and that there's this ugliness that exists in people, you know, or this like complicatedness. So yeah, and then I've also like, you know, I've had again cis men use my mental health against me and you know gaslight me and say, you know, like you, you're crazy and if I'm upset at something, you know, did you not take your meds today? You know, so I've also interacted Shit. with people like that, you know. But overall, alhamdulillah, I've been very lucky. Alhamdulillah. Mostly because of my family and my friends. But I think that's what your dad did. I, I will. I would want to come back. It, I need... I, we, I would like yeah, we unpack gaslighting. Na? Yeah. Because yeah. again, it is a word that is trivialized. It is something that is done to rape victims. Rape yeah. survivors, right? Yeah. And we... Again, trivialize it in societal discourse. Some people say, "Yar, I didn't drink your coke, so you gave me." Yar, just don't use the word. Na? Please yeah, don't. You yeah. have some respect for the word. Yeah. Um, I think what your dad, the the one thing that you told me about your dad, but also your parents just showing up every day. I think that's super powerful, simply because more than anything else, societal suicidal ideations come from a lack of meaning. Mm-hmm. If you if you if you understand mm-hmm. try to understand it from an existential standpoint mm-hmm. from a philosophical standpoint, they come from. आपको ये महसूस होने लगता है कि मेरे होने ना होने से किसी को फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा और मेरा कोई मेरा होना ना होना कोई माने नहीं रखता है, right? And in that in that darkness, if there is your dad every day reminding you through his presence, and they have to, you can't just tell someone who's going through yeah, that कि यार yeah. मैं हूँ आपके लिए फक ऑफ टू दैट इज़ वर्क यू नो मैं आगे सो थ्रू इज प्रेजेंस एवरी डे जस्ट और एवरी वीक जस्ट शोइंग यू नो 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 वे स्टिल हेयर यू स्टिल वेरी मच वांटेड आई थिंक दैट सुपर पावरफुल मैन नो आई इट्स आई एक्टिवली आई एम अवेयर ऑफ द फैक्ट देर हैव बीन टाइम्स इन माय लाइफ वेर आई बीन वेरी क्लोज टू you know being like okay now i'm going to do it and i've also set a date for it Allah but Allah. every time it's been like dude i can't for for my parents because they're going to be devastated how do i do that to my parents how do i do that to my brothers and my nieces and nephews you know and that's held me back every time and it's you know like you can argue that you shouldn't want to live for other people but in those moments it really pulls you back why you should know? you want to live for them yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Like nonsense if, if you don't feel like you have anything else then that is a good survival mechanism yeah. so yeah. It, it it actively i'm aware that it has pulled me back often in my life yeah from doing it you know allah rab kare um have you been open about wanting to do it i've uh in i always if i'm seeing a therapist during that point in time i let them know um but i if, except for one friend that i once told when i was going a partic- going through a particularly dark period i don't usually tell anyone i just you know think about it and then i plan it and then i set a date for it and then you know something or the other happens where i'm lucky enough to be pulled back from it you know and realize and also like i am a religious person so god plays a big role in this like i don't want to die and waste the life that has been given to me by divine intelligence you know so that that has also been a really big deal because the societal imperative again on, on any of those things is ke uh, just become more religious and then you'll be uh, fine uh, uh. people don't understand that these are chemical imbalances that your brain's just not wired the same way as someone else's is you know it takes a lot of work not just chemical imbalances but like neural pathways ha- have formed in your brain that gear you towards thinking in a certain way and uh, and a lot of active work goes into undoing those yeah. and a person can't do it alone you no. know i can't imagine like there is Uh, like it makes me really sad to say this but i used to go to the psych ward uh, i over like i would say four five year year period i went there thrice and the first time i went there there was a kid there who was like 17 years old aur usko na wahan la ke chhod diya tha wo literally roz puchta tha ki koi mujhse milne aa raha hai wo mujhe aaj lene aa rahe hain then and he had schizophrenia uh, you know uh, and the next time i went there he was there and the third time i went there he was there and this is like you know years two years apart Shit. all of these instances and every time i went there he would already be there before i got there and he would not have left when i would when i was leaving 
And because his, his family just didn't want to do the work with him, so they would just dump him in the psych ward. Or they psych ward ko paise dete rehte hain, wo maa pe reh rahe, wo maa pe. But, but the thing is that his schizophrenia, schizophrenia was not to a level where he couldn't come back from it or where it couldn't be managed. You know, I used to talk to him. We used to have conversations about everything, about movies and about all the stuff like that. So he was very, like, present. It's just that us, he probably needed some sort of medication, some sort of therapy, just work needed to be put on him, into him, right? Or us, like, I feel like that, I still, when I think about him, I get really sad because I'm like, no one gave that kid a chance, right? His family didn't give him a chance to get better. Yeah. So what is his life going to be like now? You know, and, and I'm cognizant here, we want to give the family a fair shake as well. Ki yaar, you know, aapki bhi apni hongi, vagera, vagera. But at some point, you do feel like, yeah, some anger is warranted. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, then why did you do that? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, if you didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also, like, you know, like, Aga Khan is, in terms of psych wards, it's uh, one of the more expensive top psych wards in the city. If someone has the privilege, the so- so- social and economic privilege, to put their kid in there for months and be able to pay lakhon mein, Bill, then that person also has the privilege to bring that person home and you know help them in some Try way, to them. Or, or afford therapy for them, or afford medication for them, or just and it does take an emotional toll. A toll. It took a really heavy emotional toll on my parents, but they didn't give up on me. And in, in if if it happened to one of my nieces and nephews, I won't give up on them because you know they're my blood. Yeah. Like you don't do that to your you, family. You don't do that to your family. You you can't do that to your family. Allah Ram kare. If if you know and if we start doing that to our family to pir matlab yeah. then, so then you don't be con- giving up on any everyone but right but then don't be confused you. that this moshra is the way it yeah. is. Don't don't yeah. get confused. Yeah. I don't want your outrage then I don't want oh nay everything is jazz yeah. then if that's what you're going to do um, but in particular you said that you were uh, there was ye prescription medicine was a big how, how do you because so many self medication is a big thing yeah, in Pakistan yeah. right how do you advise people I know you're not ex- an expert on this but how do you tell people to navigate that space because there's so many people right now popping legsies or whatever just trying to go to sleep yeah you know I think s- so that's how I started with this medication uh, I started with you know Lexotinil and Xanax and then like sleep meds and then it became like nerve relaxants pain medications right and I thought when I started that I was just managing my emotions you know just trying to get by but what i didn't know was that it was actively really dangerous for me to be doing it myself and to not be doing it without a doctor right because it became twice as hard for me to heal and to recover because my brain brain chemistry was totally up and down because no one was monitoring my intake right so one big piece of advice that I have is that if you can't sleep or if you can't get through the day and you feel like you need some sort of medication to help you, that's totally fine. But go to a doctor and have the doctor prescribe what they feel is right, right? And other thing is that you have to be very careful about the doctor that you go to. Because I, in the middle, went to this one doctor and uh, my parents had found out that I was having all sorts of these different pills so they'd become really vigilant and they weren't letting me have access to these pills. So I would go into that doctor's office and I would make up symptoms to get Jeez, him dude. to give me what I knew he would give me in response to those symptoms. And then I ended up on a cocktail of six medicines that I was on for three years because th- because then I couldn't function without them, right? Yeah. And then it became really difficult for me. Now I have a really good uh, psychiatrist who's brought it down to two, and we are working on, you know, figuring out what the right amount is. And also, lastly, with medicines, you have to be very patient, you know. You have to let them take effect, or if they don't work for you, you have to go into the doctor's office and tell them, the doctor, this isn't working, let's try something else. It's not not an instant fix. Because if you go for the instant fix ones, then you're really going down a bad road. You yes, know. and also, I think, is it fair for me to say here that often when you feel like you can get through the day without a pill, yeah. that's 
again cognitive dissonance you actually can get through it without you could do something else meditate more exercise more uh, yeah, work you, out yes uh, uh, i agree with that but when you're really suffering and yeah. you can't get yourself to do anything you know then it it, it doesn't even seem possible that sure. you can do it you know because i still have days where i'm like okay i should journal but i just can't get myself to do it yeah. you know um yeah. but again it's okay take the medicine but don't do it by yourself no. just get an appointment and go to that appointment and do it with a doctor you know that's my biggest piece of advice in in speaking about all this now i think you've been very brave but in speaking about all this mashallah se uh, don't you fear that you have opened yourself up to more character assassination so uh I mean, uh, f- f- me and my dad were talking about this, and he was like, well, you know, like, your psych ward updates are there on social media for anyone to see. Like, like my daughter, you put it out there for the world. So you made yourself very vulnerable. I don't necessarily care what people say about me because, mashallah, say, I have such a strong and doting family I'm and good. also friends that have been with me for, like, a long time, and I know they'll stick by me, and they know all of this about me. I think rather than being scared and not sharing this about myself that serves no purpose for me the better purpose is that I share this so someone out there listens and feels like okay you know there's hope for me or what if she can get through it maybe I can get through it in this Inshallah, way yeah, yeah. right so so like I said vulnerability is like yeah. I'm not scared of vulnerability no. I because there's always going to be people who are going to say bad things about you and there's going to be people who love you regardless of what you yeah. do you know yeah but, but okay, I meant in the context of, of yeah, yeah. Me, me too and uh, still you, you don't you care do, yeah, I don't care use it against me. you can't use it against me if I'm not ashamed of it I'm not ashamed of it use it find a way to use it against me I will also use it for me you know that's it's as simple as that super powerful yeah that's very good that's very good um मुझे याद पड़ता है कि आई डोंट नो सर समवन विक्टर फ्रेंकल समवन सेड दिस समवन सेड एग्जैक्टली दिस के द ओनली थिंग दैट एक्चुअली कैन नॉट बी टेकन अवे फ्रॉम यू इज योर एबिलिटी टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू योर सिचुएशन या एट द एंड ऑफ द डे दैट्स द ओनली चॉइस दैट कैन बी टेकन अवे फ्रॉम यू एवरी अदर थिंग कैन बी टेकन अवे फ्रॉम यू या यू नो एब्सोल्युटली व्हाट यू आर गोइंग टू ईट हाउ एंड यू आर गोइंग टू स्लीप एंड ऑल दोस थिंग्स बट दैट इन दैट इन दैट मोमेंट इन दैट इपॉक ऑफ टाइम दैट ब्रीफ व्हाटएवर दो तीन सेकंड वेयर यू गेट टू मेक दैट डिसीजन दैट स्टिल कैन नॉट बी टेकन अवे फ्रॉम व्हाटएवर कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस बी डैम्ड राइट व्हाटएवर कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस विल कम विल कम या बट एट लीस्ट दैट कैन नॉट बी टेकन अवे फ्रॉम यू आई थिंक दैट्स सुपर पावरफुल के यू नो इफ आई डोंट गिव इट टू यू how are you going to use it against me yeah just use it against me i'm not going to be silent no, you know no. what is the truth is the truth i'm going to speak it very openly and the truth is that there is good parts of me and there's bad parts of me and i am not going to hide any of it like you can use try to use it against me but again what's the I'm point not, of that yeah like i'm not what's scared of myself or what people think about me you know yeah i'll let him get it how how do we though as a society uh begin to be more understanding of the me too movement because i feel like jo jo response aata hai na uska yeah like most of the people who are responding to this stuff are not people of like i would never think that these people are you know uh, somehow guilty yeah. about any of it but they still regard this they're like yaar aurte bhi kharab hoti hai ha yaar hoti hai but why are you saying that You know, like, चलो आपकी बात अगर सही भी होती is there a point? Why are you saying that? Yeah. You know, how do yeah. we begin to? Why? Why does it feel to us that it is an attack on our society generally, Western propaganda and all those things with the Me Too movement? When it, it's not, it's tethered in something very important and very beautiful. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think. one important thing is for people to stop being afraid of the movement and start because ye bahut hota hai na ki ab to main kisi ko dm bhi nahi kar sakta ye kar sakti because it can be used against me right yeah. uh stop being afraid of that and realize that if you are in a situation the reason that the me too movement is powerful is because if you are in a situation or someone you love is in a situation then the me too movement provides a platform for them to get their justice right and yeah i think we're just scared of it because we'd rather 
ostracize it than do the work that it's calling us to do on ourselves. You think we're being lazy. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah, we just, we just, there's this inertia to change, right, that we don't want to do. I actually, you know, now I tell my friends uh, that if someone comes to you and they say to you that I was sexually harassed or Let that, him. you know, yeah. someone sexually abused me, you should go through a checklist in your head. You should not ask them what happened. You should not ask them who, who did it. You should just tell them, I believe you, like, unequivocally and I I support you. That's how you should I deal with fair. that. Yeah. yeah. You know? I'm I'm trying to rack my mind around it. No, I'm, I'm like what if what if they're like a duplicitous person? What if there's insidious machinations at play? Like so the, 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 then the, what I truly believe that 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 because you can't hide a lie for too long. What oh. automatically, you know? So yeah. Also, in this Moashra, I, I don't think there's a lot of clout to be gained by... There absolutely yeah, you know? isn't. Allah I was Allah just kare. thinking that. Ki, there's no clout to be Kya gained. What will you get in this Like, you will get 20% of your favor, milega, and then the rest of it, like, 7, 80% is going to be people, you know, giving you a or, you know, like, just ostracizing you. And again, what you get in this 20% jo favor, will get in our echo chamber. Mein milega. So so we're good to go till six, na? Then you yeah, have to yeah, be, you yeah. have yeah, the, huh. yeah, yeah. yeah, because I, I I am also trying to be my I'm I'm trying to be mindful okay. of, of things. Of the timings, uh, yeah. Because I don't have a clock in here. Okay. I and, and I think that's by design. You should not have a clock. You should just I talk. I don't have a clock in my phone. But then I'm like I'm always looking at my phone. So now I'm considering getting a clock. Fair. That's also mujhe, fair. Mujhe time ka thoda hota hai ke I should know how much time is passing by. Yeah, fair enough. I, ye bhi to hota hai na ki I think part of the rise in or, or, or degradation of a mental societal mental health also has to do with how uh, much we consume social media, right? Oh to, yeah. To that end, yeah, uh, yeah. To, my, uh, to, oh, huh. and also because social media is used as a coping mechanism, and it's a very maladaptive coping mechanism. 100% like I spend, I found myself spending hours on social media because I just didn't want to think or feel anything, right? Yeah. But then, wo, social media has its own effect. Sure. on you like you're comparing yourself and you're feeling shit about your life and you know but not only the, the, that just the scrolling I'll be yeah. noticed, Karuki, you'll find yourself uh, again and again tapping into like whatever your, your uh, platform of choice is again yeah. and again and just swiping up for that one more hit yeah I'll be the likes yeah. I'll be the yeah. views yeah. and, and yeah. I found myself doing that. I'm just like, dude, listen to me, yeah, man. You guys hey, take a breath. Take yeah. a what's going on yeah. here, buddy? Take a breath. Yeah. Right? It's 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 a lot. It's but actually very addictive. It yeah, is yeah. an actual addiction. It's meant it's to be. It's been one of my hardest addictions, to be honest. But it's it's meant to be. Yeah. Now, I think. Yeah. How else are they gonna? But I think, to that end, also a clock helps because then you can just put your phone in the other room or something. Yeah. You know that's what it's supposed exactly. to be. Exactly. I don't not thinking about looking at my phone. That's why I'm thinking about getting a clock. Yeah. I think we need to switch to analog at least a little bit. Like, I read all the books on the phone. Pe uh, That's something that shouldn't die. I think, I don't know. Like, yeah, save the trees also, but save your you mental... You can get a Kindle that doesn't have anything else on it but the books, right? Then you won't be... Yeah, That's a, K- a Kindle's a good idea. Yeah, Kindle would work. I My parents have Kindles. Uh-huh, they read, we're, yeah, they're always reading. But I can't do Kindle yet. I need my books. Yeah, you I need books, my, no yeah, proper huh? Books my, is good. Books, yeah. bo- bo- uh, so books, a clock, these are good things. A yeah. journal, a physical journal. Yeah, these are a good physical things. journal is a great thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Because writing something down also has a power, I think. Getting it out on paper in your own writing. I've heard it has actual psychological benefits. I don't. I can't confirm that. I can't confirm that. I don't okay, know. Okay. But I've, I have heard. Interesting. I'll look into that. I, I read that somewhere. What do you think the future of writing is in Pakistan? Oh, in Pakistan. You know, because you're a writer, you've always been a writer. You've not been anything else. Yeah. Um, I think that there will, there will always be good writers in Pakistan and there will always be gen- like people who want to read the writing. But the problem comes in when the writers are not going to be able to make any money. Like, I don't... That's ex- it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I ex- don't expect to make any money as a journalist or a writer, but I'm privilege to have my family's comfort that comes to me as well but if someone is is you know is surviving paycheck to paycheck and their choice is between writing and not making any money or you know going into the advertising industry then they're going to go into the advertising industry and that is going to be a shame because that depletes us of a lot of good writers 
I do think that, that people need to read more. People don't read more, enough, in my opinion. Why, why do you think that is? Because now, the most people are in age, they're in age. They're in the 25s and the 20s and the yeah. 19s and the 18s. They're on social media 24-7. And yeah. yet they're reading less. Yeah. Uh, see, the, the, the thing with reading is that it makes, gives you a sense of connection to like the larger scheme of things, right? Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not, an, like, it's not a very strong hit of connection and it's not a very intense, you know, sort of feeling. It, social media is an extremely instant and intense hit of connection with an actual other person. Yep. And I think people have gone away from reading because, you know, I re- read to escape and to feel connected, you know. But if I have social media, that's going to give me an even intenser hit of that and an even more immediate hit of that, then I will just go on my social media, which sure. I do. No, I spend no, hours on social media when I'm, like, thinking I should be reading, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think... Patience and attention span, you know, these are things that we're losing. 100% are. 100% yeah. are. But I'm, I'm trying to think... Uh, how can someone make money? Yeah, one is the ways. bookstores. Yeah. Publishers are horrible here. Yeah. With all due respect to anyone who I am talking to right now who is not horrible. Yeah. Most of them are. Like, so I wrote a book, right? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to get, get, I just wanted to get it published here as well. Huh. The, the Liberty Books wale log jo hai, yeah. oh dude man, yeah. you know, it's just not fun interacting yeah, with them, yeah. you know? And, and I'm not like shaming you or whatever, Rab, you have your business practices. Books Mega are wouldn't. really expensive. Yeah. They take locally produced books and they mark it up and they sell them at, you know, exorbitant wo prices. Okay, wo hai. Lekin, you know, also... But are, would our writer how much money are you giving? Yes. That's the that's, biggest thing, that's right? It. That's our it. Give writer money. Yeah. I, I don't think we... Uh, I don't think we have appreciation for... Um, ye cognitive the, capital invested uh, or you know copyright in that uh, way you we know don't, we intellectual don't. property and all those things yeah it's like woh bhala my musician friends and my artist friends are constantly talking about this ki ki paise mango to they disappear or yeah. they exposure mil raha yeah. because unko to ye hai ki aapne to bas apne computer pe baith ke banana hai aapka kya expense hai uh-huh. you know main matlab maine sikha hai like maine paise lagaye hain apni seekhne mein that's my expense yeah. you're paying me for that yeah, like, i think it was insane when i heard ki ki it really I found it ridiculous. Some really prominent musicians aren't making money. Yeah, they're not making money. I'm just like, what the money. fuck is wrong with yeah. you? You're not making yeah. money. Yeah. You're so good. Yeah. And then, so, so the thing with me is I'm like, without naming any names or brands, I'm very political and I'm very like, you know, like, why are you selling out? The point of art is to be, you know, an agent of change. But if you're working with the man or with the institution, then you're not being an agent of change. But at the same time, I'm like, it's, they're like, how do we make money? Give us the money. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, you give us the money to make our music, right? Yeah. Like, we have to feed ourselves. We have to buy more equipment. We have to buy more paints, you know, things like that. So it's, it's complicated. I think it's just, like, also a very capitalist thing that as a society, we put a lot of, you know, like, value on certain things. Like, like what? business, like okay. doctor, like engineer, which are very necessary, sure. you know, yeah. professions. Yeah. But art is also a very necessary thing. You think we're going... So, in a time, artists had a lot of power. Uh, you think we're going back to that? I think now, slowly. Yeah. I think, and, and I think the reason for that is that the younger generation of artists have proactively taken their power back and been like, okay, no, look, this is what we have. We have so much to offer. So is in the music scene especially, you know, like these, these, the like uh, uh, Ali Sohail and uh, Natasha Nurani, you know, like young stunners, these, these people are now getting recognition. They've been doing you know, it for years. But they've years. been doing it for a really long time and yeah. they were deep about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they were like, ah. Dekhna hai dekho, na dekho. Ah. and now people are finally looking. Uh, the one thing I appreciate about the young stunners, uh, at, at least, is also they've not changed their content. Uh-huh. You know, they've yeah, evolved. That's great, yeah. yeah. They've been speaking about more things, more pertinent things, existentialist themes and all those things, yeah. but still, also we, they are also they all are. that stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you know, you have to be you, man. I, I think, there's everyone else has taken you have to be you yeah yeah is, is that Absolutely. a good place to end the podcast yeah you have to be we, you we can we can <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um but before before i do i do want to check in with you uh, how are you doing now though you know we, we can't talk about uh, openly we cannot talk about the, the whatever's going yeah. on how are you feeling 
Um, well, things have changed a little since last night. Yeah. Uh, but um, overall, what I've been feeling is a great sense of release and a great sense of being able to let go and move on. Not only with this thing, but there were other things in my life that I was just, you know, holding on to and unable to move on from. It, it just all sort of purged. And now I'm finally thinking about my future. Sure. You know, I'm hopeful. Even with this thing, I'm hopeful, you know. So, so I feel, after a really long time, I feel really good. Was the... Ho- the hope, I, from what I understand, the hope was never to hurt the other person. No, no, no. The hope no. was just to do it for yourself. Yeah, the hope was this, to just get it out and, you know, just not be thinking about it anymore yeah. and not be weighed down by it anymore. That was the hope. That was always the hope. Yeah. And it, I, if people misconstrue it, you feel that's on them now. You can't really, you yes, know. Yes, but I do want to say one thing, because you were talking about council c- culture. I do really urge everyone to find out how they can continue to engage with the art, first of all, like don't cancel the art. And secondly, find out how you can hold this person and others accountable without shunning them. Because if you shun them, then you're just leaving them to their own, you know, devices. uh, devices. But if you hold them accountable and engage them in conversation, then maybe you can change things for the better in them and in society at large, you know. So I don't want anyone to be canceling anyone or anyone to stop listening to anyone's music or stop loving their idol. I just want everyone to do it more responsibly, uh-huh. you know. Uh-huh. Because I, I think that that's that's a large theme of how when we, we when we go into this mode of wanton idol worship, the first yeah. thing we do is we renege our responsibility. You think anyone's worth canceling? No. I don't think anyone's worth canceling. Nobody can do anything that's worth canceling. I mean, if you murder someone, then you are definitely worth canceling. If you hurt someone and then refuse to take responsibility for them, and then you... I don't know. I still think I, I am a big believer in, a b- believer in restorative justice as long as it's done right, you know. Do you think there is such a thing as restorative justice? I do think there is such a thing as restorative justice. And I, I, I think it, but it needs to be done right, you uh-huh. know. It, it, it needs to be not too much leeway and not cancelling. It needs to be an in between. In Accountability, you know. Accountability is a thing. Yeah. Accountability is a thing. Aisha, thank you for coming on. Thank you for it, having me. It was wonderful thank having you. you. Uh, I, I am very glad that you're doing much better now alhamdulillah thank you thank you um and a lot of it was uneasy stuff that yeah. we've spoken about it's, yeah. it's not easy huh? yeah to speak about these things but i i hope that everything else gets resolved thank and you uh, everything turns out for the better inshallah thank do you would you like to shout out your social medias oh right so <laughs> my i mean i just have one like open instagram yeah. balancing binte okay b but i mean you can tag me yeah right? i will yeah and yeah that's no youtube's thing. nothing no no how no. come uh, if the con- content creation requires a lot of active effort, which I don't put into it, and my social media is literally me just talking about random things. Like my Instagram public account is me just ranting about what I feel, or you know, updates about my dog. Those yeah, okay. are very common. Of course. So it's like a you know personal forum to just yeah. let go and release. Fair enough, but a personal forum to just let go and release. Uh, but still balancing minty yeah, is something that they can follow you on. Aisha, Kazi, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>